Hello, I'm Trent Bell. I'm an architectural photographer. Thanks for joining us. We thought we'd give you five essential basics for starting out as an architectural photographer. Number one, the very first and foremost thing you'll need really is going to be a camera and a lens. Now, that being said, you could try and start out with just your iPhone and go that way, but if you're gonna be charging people money, you'll need a camera and a decent lens. If you're investing in a good camera, here's my suggestion. You need something that's going to be full frame that can take professional level lenses. You don't necessarily have to buy a professional level lens starting out, but you wouldn't want to limit yourself by getting a camera that can't take professional level lenses. We use a Canon 5D Mark IV. We've always stayed in the 5D lineup. So far, we've been very happy with them, and I'm really happy that they now have uh, Wi-Fi connectivity because then we can use an iPad to work a live view. Being able to do that, see that live view, walk into frame, adjust things, very, very important. Not necessary for starting out, but it's nice to have the ability to go to that later. As far as a lens to start out with, I would recommend something with a 24 to 70. That's assuming that you're going on a full frame digital sensor. A 24 to 70 is gonna give you a fairly wide angle to a fairly tight uh, angle view cone. That's gonna be a really good lens that will cover most everything. Number two, you're gonna have to have a tripod. Now, you don't have to have the latest, greatest, biggest, most massive thing to impress your clients. I would recommend something that you can work quickly with, something that's going to be very stable, and something that is going to be minutely adjustable. Uh, I really love these geared heads that Manfrotto makes because you can just very, very precisely adjust things or you can uh, do larger adjustments uh, if you need. The ball heads, uh, they're great for shooting people or other things, but for architecture, geared head is, uh, if you're investing the money, go with a geared head. I've gone with a fairly small tripod, not a huge beefy tripod, because I just don't find that having a massive heavy tripod is something that I really need for what I do. Uh, it's impressive a lot of times to have this big piece of equipment, big camera, big equipment, big price, whatever, but it doesn't do that much more. As, as if I'm on site and I'm in a house that has a shaky floor or whatever else, I ask everyone to stop moving around. A big tripod's not gonna fix a shaky floor anyways. I've found the carbon fiber Manfrotto's uh, with these quick release. I like them because you can do them all at once and get the whole leg out or the, all the legs back in and close them all at once. That's the next thing you're gonna need is a tripod so you can bracket, do multiple exposures, and not lose your fixed position when you're shooting. Good investment. Number three, something powerful enough to do all your post-production. We've got a, this is a solid state, one terabyte, yada, 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 fairly high powered laptop that I use that is similar to what I started out with. Uh, we do all of our post-production, Tim does, on uh, iMac that's fairly well juiced, but you can get by on a laptop. You can almost get everything done in Lightroom if you're really stepping up to the next level and really precisely blending images and doing very specific things, you will need Photoshop. I would recommend some kind of like Wacom tablet to work with. Fifth, some type of strobe. Well, kind of fourth, the camera and lens was one and two. So really the tripod was three, laptop was four. Not necessarily you need one kind or the other, at least one strobe is going to allow you to fill the shadows and then blend kind of a natural light exposure with a strobe exposure. You can at least bounce off of a ceiling if it's a nice flat white ceiling and you can get a lot of just soft general fill to bring up the shadows just a little bit. Or you can shoot it directly into frame or through a window to create uh, the idea of some sunlight. But just having one strobe to start out is really gonna help. Uh, my recommendation, honestly, I've had the same white lightning strobes that I've had since I began almost 15 years ago, and they've never let me down. I've only ever broken one, and that's because a friend of mine knocked it face over and it broke the flash bulb, but all we did was replace the flash bulb and it kept going. They're really indestructible, not all that expensive. Now, if you're shooting fast paced motion and having to recycle quick and everything else, I would recommend more of a pro photo type of 
quality of light, where the white lightnings take a little longer, they're maybe a little heavier in, in some ways, uh, rather than just having a head up there by itself and power somewhere else. But the main thing that I look for is a very high powered light, because you can always dial it down, but if you don't have the top end of power there, uh, you're not gonna be able to fill out that light while maintaining that aperture and to compensate. You might then have to play with your ISO and get a grainy image, no fun. Those are the basic minimum of technical things that you'll need to produce starting out. You'll obviously wanna have a website and a way to show what you've done, but those are the production equipment, five basic things that you'll need. You can buy each one of these brand new, you can go to B&H and look in the used department on their online store and see if you can find each one of those things used. I would recommend uh, starting out, if budget is a concern, getting almost every single one of these things used. What we've got here is professional, good professional quality. I mean, we could go medium format on our camera and spend $50,000 on a digital camera. We've kind of avoided upgrading to that next level of digital camera. The cost on the geared head and the tripod is, is not all that much, honestly. Uh, the laptop, you can always get refurbished stuff through Apple. The, I've done that before, I think it works well. And with the strobe, a white lightning strobe is honestly just not that much in the big picture. And for architectural work, it works really well. You can try Alien Bees, they're pretty much the bottom of the barrel. They're light and reliable, not very durable. Uh, I think I still have two of those that I started out with. A surprise bonus sixth thing that you'll need starting out is tenacity, stick to -itiveness. If you're not going to be able to handle failure, you're not going to be able to succeed in doing this because there'll be endless times where you think you should have made it or you should have been able to do this or someone should have given you that job and you just won't get it. You will fail over and over again, but it's about getting up, dusting yourself off and continuing to strive and keep going, being that squeaky wheel that eventually gets the grease. You can be the best at capturing architecture of anyone in the country, but if you don't have that stick to -itiveness, you won't succeed in business and you won't succeed at being a self-employed creative. Tenacity to stick to it is kind of that sixth X factor that you're really gonna need to be someone who can make a living at this. Those are my five plus one things for starting out that you're really gonna need to be successful at a minimum. Thanks for viewing. Uh, hit the like and subscribe and share it because we appreciate that kind of thing. It helps us out. Thanks a lot.